air at a temperature of 30 Celsius and 6 kilopascal pressure flow with the velocity of 10 meters per second over a flat plate 0.5 meters long. Estimate the heat transferred per unit width of the plate needed to maintain its surface at a temperature of 45 Celsius. Okay, so this right here has a T wall of 45 Celsius, and then we have air coming in hot, no cold, at 30 Celsius with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Cool, so we know that there will be Q going from our plate into the air. Right, we don't know the width of this plate, so let's do, let me draw the plate like so. And so we're not sure what this guy is here. So we're going to assume one so that we can find the Q per unit width, right? So what we'll be doing is we know Newton's law of cooling, which states that the heat transfer will be equal to the convective coefficient, the area, and the delta T. And in this case here, what we're going to do is we're going to break our area, which would be this guy here, right? So this area here, and this area would be otherwise the length of the 0.5 meter length times the width and we don't know the width so we'll just leave it as w there and then delta t right so what we're going to be calculating at the end of the day is q over w which is just h the length so just leave l for now which is a 0.5 times the delta t cool so it will it would be really easy if you had if we had H, but we don't, so we need to find H, and to find H, we're going to do our ride. Okay, so let's see, let's start with our film temperature. What is our film temperature for this situation here? will be temperature between 30 and 45. That's the film temperature we're going to be using on this problem here to solve it. And that will render 37.5 Celsius. Which is the same thing as let's see, film three hundred and ten point five Kelvin. Right, so I need to grab properties at three hundred and ten point five Kelvin. So what I did this time is properties, property, pro properties at three hundred and ten point five. So what I did this time is instead of um, interpolating all of them, what I did was I used Excel and I've put the temperatures there so I just um, use Excel to calculate every single one of them all together. Okay, so I have my temperature at 300, the values, the temperature at 350, the values, and then 310.5 and then the values for density, uh, dynamic viscosity, conductivity, and Prandtl. So I'll be using these guys here. Okay, so I've used Excel to grab the other value that I want. So for density, I've got the value of 1.19. One then dynamic viscosity. Um, Conductivity and per note seven o six will be good enough for this. Okay, now we need to be extra careful with this guy because we're not at one atmosphere, so we need to make sure we're accounting for that when we're calculating our rain outs, okay? So we're about to do that. So what will be our density? So again, remember, density is simply mass over volume. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's do that dance one more time. Um, P1, V1, equals P2, V2. Remember, we want our plate not to change temperature whatsoever. And we want the air to be at the Average temperature, okay, because at the average temperature, so our T will go away. Um, so, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to sub in the where I have V1, I'm going to sub in, so I'm going to do the substitution here, which V is just mass over the density, right? So, this mass 
over density one, and over here I have P2, and that will be mass over density two. Now the masses don't change. So I'll have that my density two, which is what I'm after, is equal to P2 times density one divided by P1. So in my case here, my pressure, uh, what's the pressure? Six kilopascals. Okay, so six times ten to the third pascals, and one atmosphere, which we you know are, is our P1, be one point oh one three three. It's close enough. Times ten to the fifth, right? And these are both in pascals, so the pascals go away. And we're multiplying that by our density one, which in this case obviously is one point one three nine. Okay, cool. So let's get Reynolds. Let's get Reynolds density, velocity, characteristic length, and the full L dynamic viscosity. So that will be 1.139 times, what was it? 6 third divided by 1.133 to the fifth. So that's just density. Velocity, this guy is coming in at 10 meters per second. The length of this plate is 0.5 meters. And the dynamic viscosity, 1.89, 10 to the minus 5. Okay, I've got the right notes to be 17,813. Okay, if you get close enough, that's good because you're probably not using the computer, so you're not going to have, the numbers are not going to go so far down as mine are going. So this will be our Reynolds, and we'll notice, we'll know that this is smaller than Reynolds critical, Reynolds critical, so therefore this is laminar. So if this is laminar at L, that is further down the, far, furthest down we can go on this plate, that means the whole thing is laminar, right? So we have to use laminar equations to describe this situation. And if you guys, Recall the under these conditions under the laminar with Reynolds below critical and Prandtl between um, at 0.7, which is what we have. The equation that describes this is the 0 0.332 Reynolds, and this is x for both one half Prandtl to the one third, right? And then you guys will recall that if we want the whole thing, if we want to take get the average nozzle. What we do is we integrate from 0 to L, and we divide by L, right? So we can get the average over the whole thing. And then when we do that, we can, you can run this integration for yourselves. Yeah, you can run this integration, and this is for the x. You can run this integration yourselves. Um, what you need to do is you're going to sub in, over here you sub in uh, density times velocity times x, or in this case, yeah, x, over um, viscosity. Those, all the constants will come out. This guy will come out as well. And then all we're going to be doing will be integrating dx, uh, x to the half to part by dx, right? And so our conclusion to this is that this equals 2 times our local nozzle, which is, again, this guy here, right? So if we want the average nozzle, it's just two times our equation, which is just twice this number here. Right? So six, six, four, Reynolds half, Reynolds third, and then we're looking for the whole thing yet, yeah, right? So we have everything we need. So my average nozzle will be 0.664. My Reynolds is 17, 8, 13. Something close to that for the whole thing. My Prano is 0.706 or so. The third, this gave me 78 as nestle. So 78.9. Now, on that heavy nestle, I can calculate the average thing for the whole for the whole L, which will just be my average nestle times my K divided by my L. So 78.9 times 0 0.027 divided by L, 
which is point five, and that gave me four point two, uh, four point three, four point twenty six, four point twenty six six two. I'll just leave it six six. It's already too many decimal places for what we're looking for, and then we can finish it off. And remember that we were looking for, where is it? We we're looking for this this relationship here. To get that, we just needed that our h for the whole thing, right? So let's we finish it off. So if we want q over width, we just multiply our h that we've got 4.266 times 0 0.5, and our difference in temperature is 45 minus 30, was it? We get yeah 30, which will be 15. Unit-wise, that'll be watts per meter squared, Kelvin, multiplied by meters, multiplied by Kelvin. So Kelvin, Kelvin, meters, uh, there you go. So Q over width will be about 32. 32 is close enough for me. 32 watts per meters. Right, that'll be our answer right there. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that this guy, the plate is giving away 32 watts per meters. Let's go back to our drawing. Our drawing over here. So we're saying that this plate here is giving you out 32 watts for every meter. Other way around, right? For every, every meter width. So 32 watts for every meter that we have in width. Right, so if we want to maintain this wall at 45, which is the, the point of the math that we did, we need to supply that amount of energy to the wall, right? Because if it's losing that amount of energy, its temperature will decrease as it's giving energy to the air. But if we supply it with the 32 watts per meters, then this wall is going to uh, be kept at 45, which is what we want, right? How much energy we need to give is needed to maintain the surface at 45. So if we're giving to it the same amount that it's given away to air, then it should stay at the temperature that it is originally.